Okay, I basted all the pieces together and everything looks real good. Here's the front with one of the sleeves basted in. I saw no reason to put the other sleeve in. So here is the front. Peplum turned out pretty good. There's the back. Everything looks good. So we're going to be sewing. Let me just hack into my webcam here. Okay. One thing I wanted to show you, though, we're over here at the ironing board. My fabric is a double knit, and it does stretch and shrink. So I have to re-block my pattern, my fabric pattern pieces to match the pattern again. So what I'm doing here, I'm just taking both pieces that have all your inner lining and I put my stitches in, all the clips are in and everything, and I'm just aligning like my corners. I'll come down here, align my corner down here. Now I'm putting my big pins in at this point. I'm gonna fine tune it with my small pins. But I just wanna make sure every edge is matched up, all the notches are matched up. You want this exactly the way it was whenever you cut it. Do I have a notch up here? No. Okay. Let's make sure it's matched up here on the curve. And here's a notch. There. You might have to tug it a little bit to fit it back to where it's supposed to go. All right. That's done. Make sure your iron's on. And you're going to get a good head of steam going here in a minute. And then you grab your pattern piece. Now, if you do like I do and transfer them over to tissue paper, you might have a join where you had to scotch tape two pieces together. Watch out for that because that scotch tape will melt your iron. Do this without any steam whenever you're pressing your tissue pieces. If you have steam, it's going to make them curl up. And all you want to do is to get it flat. Now we're going to put our steam up. And what we do here, okay, flip him around. Oh, looks like we're going to have to flip him over. We want to match this up to the pattern piece. Now, here's where you're going to have to do some stretching. Start at one edge, upper or lower. Anchor it down real good with your silk pins, okay? Now your thing's going to want to stretch this way. We're going to have to stretch this out this way. So consider that in the angle you put your pins. I'm putting, since it's stretching that way, I'm angling my pins that way. It'll anchor it down better. Now let's go down to the bottom here. Pull it anchor it down. You might have to put another pin in if you really have to pull hard, as I've had to do on the back piece. That one was a pain. Try to put these pins in within your seam allowance. This is how you block a knitted sweater too, only you use T-pins on that. And just match your cut edge of your pattern of your piece your fabric to the cut edge of your fab of your pattern piece underneath it. That's why I put the pattern piece on the bottom because it's so much easier to see where the edge is with the fabric pieces on top. Now as you go around, you might have to readjust a little bit. Make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. What you're doing, fabric has memory, and what you're doing here is it's already remembering the shrink, how much it shrunk. So we need to reteach its memory. And all I'm doing, now say up here, it's already stretched. And I'm going to put this, another one in the center there. 
And then we'll kind of go around here too. And I'm putting them towards the bottom. Hmm, missed it. Keep on pinning. Try to get them in there as flat as you can because we are going to be laying a hot steaming iron over these pins. It's, we're just going to lay it on there for about five or ten seconds. Let the steam really work into it. Take your big pearl pins out as you go down the line. Remember, try to get them in your seam allowance, not on the outside of your seam allowance. In case, when you lay your iron down, the pin head makes an impression. It'll make an impression in your seam allowance not inside, of, not on the outside of it where it'll be seen. Kind of lift this up a little bit. Get it right on the edge. Don't let it stretch out to the width either. That guy can go. That guy can go. And I'm getting my iron ready. Be ready for a nice head of steam here in just a moment. Okay, see, this guy's got to come back this way. So, and I really pin them down. And I really make sure that it's on the edge. Now, if you have a real ravelly fabric, mine's not too bad. But if you have a real ravelly fabric, you'll want to have pinked it and then done a straight stitch next to your pink, pinked edge to keep it from raveling out while you go through all of these changes, blocking and whatnot. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now what we're going to do... don't have any water, but let's see if I've got enough to steam it a little bit. Pick it up, set it down. What you're going to do is to generate some nice steam and reteach this. Sorry. Okay, now you're just going to leave it there for 20 minutes or so. Let it all re-memorize where it's supposed to be. You might want to stretch it out now a little bit more in some places while it's still hot. All right, that looks good. We're going to go ahead and leave this like this for about 20 minutes. And then when I take it off, it'll be at this exact proportion so we know we can go in and start sewing. Anyway, that's how you re-block a pattern or a piece of fabric. Uh, that's why I always advocate cutting... Uh, where's my scissors? Okay. Don't know. Well, I always advocate cutting, uh, cutting it out raw without cutting it on the pattern first. You can even trace your pattern out. I'm trying to get some of these little eyelashes out of here. You can even trace your pattern onto your fabric if you really have expensive fabric and you're afraid to really start working with it too much. Yeah, these eyelashes here need to go away. But that's basically it, how you reblock your pattern piece. You should always, once you cut it, raw and then cut it on the cutting lines you should always go ahead and come back in press it and then recut it and lay it back the pattern back on your fabric piece and cut it out again that way you always make sure you have a perfect cut thanks for joining me you all have a great night